What is going on, everybody? It is the Frogs, and we are here with your Clash of Champions preview and prediction show as we have Clash of Champions on the WWE Network in two days. This is the final pay-per-view of the year 2017. This pay-per-view has been more of just thrown together at last minute, it feels like. They've rushed to get all this together. The only matches that have really had any real build, for the most part, are the two big top matches of the night, which would be AJ Styles versus Jinder Mahal for the WWE Championship, and Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens versus Shinsuke Nakamura and Randy Orton, which sent with Shane McMahon and, and Daniel Bryan at ringside. We really haven't had much build for anything else, so it's also like we have Baron Corbin versus Bobby Roode versus Dolph Ziggler. That match was just thrown together. Charlotte Flair versus Natalya. That match is um, happening because of the Riot Squad ruining their title match a couple weeks ago. You have a Fatal 4-Way tag team match. You, That's about it. That's all. And, and Brizongo will take on the Bludgeon Brothers. And we have a pre-show match with Zack Ryder and Mojo Rally, which... I guess we can start there. We have on the pre-show, you'll have Zack Ryder versus Mojo Rowley. Who really cares about this? A couple weeks ago, they took on the Bludgeon Brothers, got absolutely destroyed. Then they, then the very next week, they took on the Bludgeon Brothers again. This time, Zack Ryder got destroyed with Mojo Rowley taking the heat and beating down the first time. They were interviewed at the end after that match is over by and Zack Ryder is telling, I believe it was Vinay Young or Charlie Caruso, whichever one. That things that need to change, the rough spot, and Mojo Rally blindsides him from behind, beats him down, and it leads to the match that we're going to have on Sunday. Don't really care who wins. These guys are going absolutely nowhere. They are just going to become jobbers and very like lower mid card guys. Mojo Rally will probably pick up the win just if they want to build him for anything, and that's about it. Then we're going to get into the main show, which I'm going to start with Breezango, Bandango, and Tyler Breeze versus the Bludgeon Brothers. I don't, like, for months, four months, there has been tease since the, um, found, since Breezango has started this Fashion Files gimmick on the SmackDown, which has been demoted, and I'd say happily demoted to the WWE Network. I was getting tired of him. I didn't like him at all, but... A couple months ago, but I think it was right before SummerSlam, actually. This is how far back this goes. They were in one of their Fashion Files episodes. I think it was when they were still mimicking the Law and & Order. And their office was destroyed. And they couldn't figure out who was doing it. And there was rumors going around that it was supposed to be Authors of Pain and other tag teams. And it turns out that they never really gave you a resolution until a couple weeks ago, or I'm saying that was a month ago, where they got a message was 2B. And then, I think three, four weeks ago, they were doing some kind of spoof. I think it was on Stranger Things. And they, like, the lights blacked out. And there was a picture of the Bludgeon Brothers on the chalkboard, the little corkboard that they have. And the lights went out and showed a flat, showed a light on the Bludgeon Brothers, and I was like, are they finally going to, like, have these two go at it? And we still had the wait, we still had the wait, we still had the wait, and we got to this past Tuesday, where they showed a snippet from the WWE.com or YouTube page exclusive that these guys will take on the Bludgeon Brothers. Basically, I think this will be more of the same. Maybe Breezonga will get a little bit of offense in, show that the how the Bludgeon Brothers take selling a little bit, because they really haven't done that yet. They've gone through the, the hype boost twice. Two jobbers, including Colin Delaney, which was last week. But I expect to see the Bludgeon Brothers win this handily. No problem whatsoever. Maybe a little bit of offense from Bizongo. But that's about it. Then we're going to go to Baron Corbin versus Bobby Roode versus Dolph Ziggler for the United States Championship in a triple threat match. I don't understand why Dolph Ziggler is put in this match. He hasn't been seen on TV in months. Since he lost to Bobby Roode uh, to get to Survivor Series, which has been at least a month and a half. But this this pretty much came to be, be due to the week after the, the Tuesday after Survivor Series. Owens and Zayn were put in, in a 
Lumberjack match, tag team match against the New Day. So Ziggler, not Ziggler, but Bobby Roode and Baron Corbin were on the same side as Lumberjacks. Bob, Baron Corbin goes to nail Sami Zayn, and Baron Cor Bobby Roode's right behind him. But so Sami Zayn moves out of the way, and those two start brawling. Not really much other than the next the next week. Bobby Roode's asked why. Baron Corb, do you, do you think Baron Corbin did that on purpose, or was he just like was it just a mistake? Baron, Bobby Roode says that Baron Corbin is afraid of him, and that if he take if he messes with him again, he will take his title from him and make it absolutely. He goes to say absolutely glorious. But Baron Corbin come in and says you're just delusional, and that was that. We really didn't get much else between these two until last week and this week, this past Tuesday. In which Baron Corbin faced Bobby Roode, which, why didn't they save that for the pay-per-view? Just, like, then they had Bobby Roode, Baron Corbin versus Dolph Ziggler this week again. Why didn't you save that for the pay-per-view? But they both ended pretty much the same with Dolph Ziggler interfering in the Bobby Roode-Baron Corbin match, hitting both of them with a zigzag. And this week, Bobby Roode hitting Dolph Ziggler and Baron Corbin with the glorious DDT. Which makes me believe Baron Corbin is going to win the match because he was the guy not he was the only guy in this match not to get his finisher on both of the other guys during the him like matches between these two. So it's going to be Baron Corbin with the win. Dolph Ziggler's probably in this match to eat the pin. This could be unless things change, this could be Dolph Ziggler's last match in WWE. I believe his contract's up soon if it hasn't come close to up already. I can see him beating him Baron Corbin. Taking the win by having Bobby Roode hit the glorious DDT on Dolph Ziggler. And in the same fashion how he won the WWE United States Championship, he takes he takes Bobby Roode and gets him out of the ring and pins Dolph Ziggler for the 1-2-3. It's going to be Dolph Ziggler taking the pinfall because they don't want to bury him. They don't want to kill Bobby Roode yet. So they're using Dolph Ziggler who can eat a pinfall here and there because he is Dolph Ziggler. And Baron Corbin will take the will win this match and retain his title. Then we have the Usos, the New Day, the Xavier, uh, Shelton Benjamin, and Gable, Chad Gable versus Rusev and Aiden English and a fatal four way for the tag team championships of SmackDown Live. When this was announced, it was a triple threat match with uh, Rusev and Aiden English added to last week after they beat the New Day. In a pretty good match last week. So this match is. I'm kind of. Um, I don't know who's going to win this match. I'm pretty sure. I don't know if the Usos are going to keep the titles. I wouldn't be surprised if they do. I wouldn't be surprised if they lost them. Maybe. I don't see Rusev and Aiden English. Winning this match. Simply because they made them look too dominant. Over the likes of New Day and Usos. They, I could see maybe. Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin. Maybe stealing a victory. Because they've been more heelish. But this match should be a good one. I'm not really keen on Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Matches. But this one's going to be different. Usually when you see a Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Match, it's two two men in the ring. You can tag anybody that you want. And that's how the match usually goes. This Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Match is going to have one member of each team in the match. And you can only tag your tag team partner. So that's going to be a very interesting dynamic of how they have this match go off. But if I was going to make a say, I would say either the Usos or Gable and Benjamin are going to win this match to give us new blood for the tag team rivalry. I think this should have just been a singles match. Jay, um, Shelton Benjamin versus, and Kat, Chad Gable versus the Uso. Simply because Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable didn't get their, like, didn't get a fair title match. The first time they got a title match against the Usos, Chad Gable clipped one of the Usos. I think it was Jimmy. And he's pretty much, it looked like when that happened, it looked like he was actually injured. But he turned out to be that he was okay. But he sat out in the, outside the ring and got counted out. So I thought that, I figured this should have been a normal one-on-one -on -one match, like a two-on-two -two match, tag team match. No four-way. They could have did another match with, Kurt, with the New Day versus English and Rusev due to the, the beef between these two teams when... How, when the Halloween edition of SmackDown Live happened, Big E and, and Rusev had a match after Rusev threw their candy on the floor and stepped on it. They could have built off of that and made this a match for the show so we could have eight matches. Because I don't think short, uh, they, like, they could have did something like that and just gave 
Gable and Benjamin the uh, legitimate tag team title match. But it is what they want to do. So I'm saying the Usos or Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable. Rusev and Aiden English I don't think are going to be any factor at all into the win. They might even take the pinfall. Aiden English will probably take the pinfall. If not, it would be the New Day to take the pin because that wouldn't hurt them at all. Then we have Charlotte Flair versus Natalia for the Women's Championship in what they want to call a Lumberjack match. How this game to be, we go all the way back to Hell in a Cell where Charlotte was was taking on and was taking on Natalia for the Women's Championship. That match ended in a DQ due to Natalia using a chair to beat down on Charlotte to protect her championship. Fast forward to I believe it was a week. Oh, it was a, it was the sun. It was a, the Tuesday before Survivor Series. These two had a rematch with Charlotte Flair going over. They wanted to give Charlotte Flair the title to build off the momentum of Ric Flair's Ric Flair's Thirty for Thirty, which was a pretty good um, Thirty for Thirty for ESPN. If you guys want to check that out, I highly recommend it. So she went to Survivor Series and took on Alexa Bliss in a pretty underwhelming match, but. It was last minute, so then we had, I believe it was, yes, the, the week after Survivor Series, the Tuesday after Survivor Series, you had Charlotte taking on Natalya in Natalya's rematch, and this was also the debut week of the Riot Squad on SmackDown Line of Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, and Sarah Logan. Earlier in the night, those two beat down Naomi and Becky Lynch, sending Becky Lynch off to make a movie with The Miz. Not going to go there. But they came out later in the night and caused a, caused a pretty much DQ and the no contest between these two. So when they made all these matches for these all these title matches for for class of champions, it was made Charlotte versus Natalia for the women's championship. And the two last week, all the women, all the women, including Ruby Riot, were upset that Natalia was getting the title shot and that they and all of them were arguing that they should that they were more deserving of a title shot than Natalia including Ruby Riot who beat Charlotte the week before so Daniel Bryan's solution was and I'm not happy about this because they really don't have enough women for a, a legitimate lumberjack match but they made it a lumberjack match which means the rest of the women's division on SmackDown Live will be outside the ring. That includes the three members of the Wyatt Squad. Tamina, Lana, Carmella, Naomi. And that's it. Really? I believe that's it. That's like seven women. And this is supposed to be a lumberjack match. A lumberjack match is supposed to be like ten people on each side of the ring. Or something like that. Like five to six people on each side of the ring. Covering the ring. How are you going to have a lumberjack match with like only seven women on the outside? Now, if this would have been last year before the brand split and you wanted to do a lumberjack match with all the women, then it would have made a little bit more sense. But usually it's a, it's a lumberjack match. It's going to go like any other lumberjack match. These two are going to have a match. They'll throw each other outside, get beat up a little bit, thrown inside. And by the time the match is over, the... By the time the, match, the climax of the match, as any Lumberjack match will be, everyone's going to start beating the heck out of each other. Somebody's going to get distracted. Somebody's going to go hold up. One, two, three. And that's going to be the win. Will they get Natalya the title pack here? This would be the only way I can see them giving the title back to Natalya. I don't think they will, though. I think that the show is going to win it. But it would not surprise me if Natalya wins this by cheap roll-up because Charlotte is distracted by the Lumberjacks beating the heck out of each other. Just like any other Lumberjack match. And what I don't... Then after that we have AJ Styles with Jinder Mahal with the Singh Brothers. After all of what happened two weeks ago. We figured the Singh Brothers might be done with Jinder Mahal. And they wouldn't do anything else. And they'd be off to wherever. But apparently that was not the case. I know they went to India with him to do the whole India tour. But yeah, they're still with him. How... Did we get here? Well, let's go all the way back to Backlash. Jinder Mahal, out of everybody on the main roster, was put into a position that he was nowhere close to be ready for. They gave him the title by having him, with the Singh Brothers help, beat, beat Randy Orton for the WWE Championship. 
and he held on to that title till two weeks before Survivor Series. He held on to that title, putting on bad match, match after bad match after bad match, bad promo after bad promo after bad promo, all because they wanted to get this guy to India as the WWE Champion. But somewhere along the way, somebody got into the head and, or the crowd did, because this past, because this past Survivor Series, they announced champion versus champion matches for all titles, minus the Cruiserweight title, because there's only one Cruiserweight champion in all of WWE. They, it was going to be Brock Lesnar versus Jinder Mahal. And the crowd didn't want that. Nobody in WWE wanted that. Unless you're, unless you're talking to that buffoon Booker T on Monday Night Raw who has his own podcast, who sat there on his um, one podcast and said how it would have been a great dynamic, how Jinder Mahal and Brock Lesnar would have been a, a stellar match. Are you freaking kidding me? Jinder Mahal is a awful wrestler. He ain't. A, I don't care. He may look the part. He may like try and act like he's a champion, but he's not a good champion. He was nowhere near close to a good champion. This match won't even close the show, probably. The next match I'll talk about is probably close the show because it has higher implications than the WWE Championship. But two weeks before Survivor Series, we had we were they were on their UK tour, and Jinder Mahal the week before beat down AJ Styles, and it was supposed to be in the UK tour. Jin, AJ Styles versus Rusev, the winner was going to go on to represent SmackDown Live in Survivor Series with the rest of the 5 on 5 team. Well, that's that, that Saturday, or Friday, one of those two days, we get a tweet from General, from Commissioner Shane McMahon that due to his attack on AJ Styles, Jinder Mahal was going to put this WWE Championship on the line in the UK against AJ Styles. Which we were all surprised about, and didn't, uh, and figured the only what only thing that could happen is they had to take the title off agenda. That was the only reason they would do that. They wouldn't just say, "Well, we're gonna get put, we're gonna put this title that is eventually gonna be on the line against AJ Styles. We're just gonna move it up to two weeks before Survivor Series to just have AJ Styles lose, just to make Jinder Mahal look a little bit bigger for Brock Lesnar, which wasn't going to happen." I like anybody who thought that Jinder Mahal was going to keep that title after all that was just losing their minds. So they had Jinder Mahal lose the title, and AJ Styles went on to put one of the best, if not the best, main roster match of the year against Brock Lesnar. Tell me, I like tell me at the beginning of 2017 you were going to hear that out of anybody's mouth. But so. After Survivor Series, it, at, the, at Survivor Series, Jinder Mahal did not have a match at all. He didn't get involved with this match against AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar. All we know, all we saw was that he said that after he after AJ gets embarrassed by Brock Lesnar, he's coming for his title. That night, Michael Cole, as AJ Styles was coming to the ring, and that promo ended, said Jinder Mahal invoked his rematch clause for that next Tuesday on SmackDown Live. So we were all like, oh, okay, they're going to take the title. They're going to give Jinder Mahal his rematch on Tuesday. They're going to end this whole charade of Jinder Mahal being a champion. And he's going to just go away. He's going to go away. He's not going to be champion. He's going to lose his number one contendership. And that's going to be that. Then we get to Tuesday at night, the, week, the, night, the two nights after Survivor Series, and Jinder Mahal with no like title match somehow just disappeared. They went from Jinder Mahal is getting his tag, his title rematch to AJ Styles is going to come out and cut a promo about what happened at Survivor Series and what's going to happen with Jinder Mahal and his tag, title match. And then, of course, Jinder Mahal that night, AJ Styles came out, cut his promo, said he's mad that he's supposed to be defending his title against Jinder, but Jinder's nowhere to be found. On the Titan Tron, Jinder Mahal says that he won't have his rematch when he says he wants it. And that it will be a clash of champions. So that's where we come to now. Then, of course, Jinder Mahal 
cronies, the Singh brothers, were put in, in a two-on-one handicap match against AJ Styles. AJ Styles beat them handily after Jinder Mahal attacked AJ Styles from the beginning before the match started and sent him to the outside. They did try and beat him down, but AJ Styles ended that quickly with a super AJ Styles clash off the second rope on from one sing, with some one Singh brother onto another, pinned them, and got out of the dodge before Jinder Mahal could get to him. And then Jinder Mahal tended to hit the Coloss on both Singh brothers, nearly killing one of them, the way he threw one of them down. And we all thought, all of us thought, even Dave Meltzer thought, they were, done, they were going to write the Singh brothers off, and it was just going to be Jinder Mahal and AJ Styles for the WWE Championship. But as of this past Tuesday, as you saw, that did not seem to be the case, and Jinder Mahal is going to have the Singh Brothers in his corner versus AJ Styles. But, I'm hoping WWE does not make the same mistake twice. The whole reason they gave this guy a waste of time with this guy for six freaking months was for him to get to India as WWE Champion and to take on Kevin Owens and be the big baby face in India. But what happened? They got... They got... They got they got lazy. They gave him a terrible title reign, bad promos, bad matches. Not all his fault, but a lot of it was his fault because it's he barely he barely got a good match with AJ Styles. AJ Styles barely gave him a good like got a good match out of him. He his matches with Shinsuke Nakamura were all awful. His matches with Randy Orton were all awful, except for the one that he lost, which was a non-title match. Um, but AJ Styles cannot, they do not want to take this title off of AJ Styles. AJ Styles is the best worker, the best wrestler in WWE today. Paul Heyman has said it. JBL last night on Tribute to the Troops said it. And I agree with it. AJ Styles is the best wrestler in WWE. In the world, it's debatable. There's great wrestlers all over the world. But in WWE, AJ Styles is the best wrestler we have. And you want to give this failure Raja, the modern day failure Raja, Jinder Mahal, the title back, you got to be out of your mind. This guy, and they say, yes, Jinder Mahal could win, lose it. Like, Jinder Mahal could lose the match. Could lose the match and just continue on as, but doesn't lose. I think Jinder Mahal can win the match but not win the title. The Singh brothers could get involved. And the referee for once in his life actually call a DQ. And then Jinder Mahal is still your number one contender going into the Royal Rumble. I hope it doesn't do that. I hope AJ Styles does pretty much what he did last time. Takes out the Singh brothers and then hits a phenomenal form, and this time a Styles Clash to take out Jinder Mahal, win, keep the WWE Championship, and send Jinder Mahal to catering with the likes of the um, Primo and Epico, and all those guys. Then what I believe is going to be the main event, I could be totally wrong, but it seems like this would be if they're going to go the route I think they might go, this would be a better route for them to do as the main event, which is going to be Randy Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. If Sami Zayn and Shinsuke Nakamura both lose, not Shin, I'm sorry, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, not Shinsuke Nakamura. If Owens and Zayn lose this match, they are fired not just from SmackDown, but all of WWE. Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan are both going to be special referees of this match. How did we get here? How did we get to this match? Well, before we get to this match, we have all the way back at SummerSlam 2017 when Kevin Owens was taking on AJ Styles. It probably went a little bit before that, but we will go all the way back to Survivor's SummerSlam where we had Kevin Owens and AJ Styles in the ring for the U.S. Championship. Man, it just seems so, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago. But it was, it feels like it's been forever ago that AJ Styles was United, your United States champion. And now he's the WWE champion going into the show. Time goes by. But anyway, Kevin Owens was taking on taking on 
AJ Styles, but Shane McMahon was your special guest referee for that match. AJ Styles ends up winning that match with Kevin Owens by with Shane McMahon pretty much calling the match pretty much down the middle. The next week, on next Tuesday on SmackDown, of course, Kevin Owens comes out and blames Shane McMahon for everything going wrong in that match. And he wants another match. Doesn't happen. I think it actually did, and he lost again. Because, yes, it did happen, and he had Baron Corbin as his special referee. Baron Corbin ended up leaving that match. Shane McMahon took over as referee and ended up counting out and AJ Styles getting the pinfall on Kevin Owens and Kevin Owens getting screwed again. The next week, I believe it was, Kevin Owens came out, insulted Shane McMahon's family, insulted, insulted his kids, and that pretty much set off your... Set, set off Stan McMahon, and he ended up getting suspended for a week by his father. The next week, that week that he got suspended, Shane, Vince McMahon comes out. McChain, Kevin Owens, like the dastardly heel, the heel that he is, because they love to do this with heels. He comes out and is like, I'm going to sue all of WWE. He's talking about this lawsuit. He's talking about wanting to sue WWE. Out comes Vince McMahon. And tells him, you're not going to sue us. You know, I only suspended Shane McMahon because of he didn't finish the job. <sighs> and that there will be a match at, at Hell in a Cell. And it will be inside Hell in a Cell between him and Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens then asked Vince McMahon to let, like, uh, don't hold any consequences against him, against him when he beats down a McMahon not making any... Not making reference to who he's talking about. They shake hands and uh, he ten he starts beating up Vince McMahon, which leads to pretty much the match at Hell in a Cell, in which they these two those two beat the hell out of each other in Hell in a Cell, and the match pretty much came down to it. They were both on top of the cell. We all thought a lot of us thought that one of those. So things was gimmick. It was really, really not a match you want to go watch. Go back and watch when they go up top because it was really uncomfortable after a while because they kept trying. It looked like they're like this thing should have fell through and they just kept trying and trying and trying and it did not happen. Anyway, they get they get they start coming back down. Kevin Owens gets knocked down into the first announce table and Shane McMahon had the match one right there. He could have just pinned him right there, one, two, three, and been done with it. But he's like, nope, I'm not done with this. I'm not done with this. Pulls Kevin Owens over to the other announce table, climbs back up to the cell, ready to do the spot he did against The Undertaker the year before. All of a sudden, when he does this, Kevin Owens just disappears. We don't know what's going on. Corey Graves on commentary asks, where did Kevin Owens go? And they point the camera off to the side, and there was Sami Zayn, which... Gave Sami Zayn the much needed heel turn in my opinion. Because as a baby face he was going absolutely nowhere. So Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn became a tag team right then and there. Fast forward to a couple weeks after that. They talk about how like we start after the TLC pay-per-view we had Raw and SmackDown started a little brand warfare which hasn't been going on at all during this year we get to smackdown and Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens come out and say how they're going how they're willing to let their hatred for Shane McMahon be off to the side while they can help represent smackdown for a survivor series and unlike Raw Shane says you guys will have to earn your way onto the show which you had Kevin Owens versus Shinsuke Nakamura the week after and you had Sami Zayn versus Randy Orton Sami Zayn loses to Randy Orton. Kevin Owens loses to Shinsuke Nakamura. To those two go to Survivor Series, while Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn do not. Fast forward to Survivor Series. Those Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens were on the pre-show, saying it was an injustice of their characters and how they should be representing SmackDown and not be taking on Brizongo, which they did in a very. Eh, it was a pre-show match. We really cared. Later on in the night at Survivor Series, we had the 5-on-5 match. It came down to Randy Orton and Shane McMahon versus Triple H, Braun Strowman, and Kurt Angle. 
Randy Orton was in the match against, I believe it was Kurt Angle or Triple H, and Shane McMahon was on the apron. Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens come out from, I'm pretty sure, over by the Bellkeeper's area and start beating down on beating down on Shane McMahon. The biggest problem I had with this entire little segment they had here is that Shane McMahon pretty much no sold the entire beat, like the entire interference between these guys. He just goes up, grabs a chair, and starts whacking them with the chair and chases them off. I'm like, what was the point? What was the point? You could have had, if you wanted to do it right, you could have had Braun Strowman eliminate Randy Orton, the news two outside, throw a beat down Shane McMahon in to Braun Strowman, have Braun Strowman hit him with a power slam one, two, three, and that would be in the show. But nope, that's not how they wanted to do that, and we'll get into that at a different time, but not right now. The next Tuesday on SmackDown Live, Vince, Shane McMahon's vendetta for wanting to punish Shami Zayn and Kevin Owens started to come out. He wanted to fire them immediately. Daniel Bryan came out to stop that. <clears throat> Daniel Bryan came out and was like, we're not going to fire them yet. We're not going to fire them yet. We're going to put him in a, six, a, a, a tag match against the New Day. But it's going to be a Lumberjack match. With everybody else besides Randy Orton who was sent home. Because he would, because Daniel Bryan was fearing that Dan, Randy Orton was going to do something he was going to regret. And those two would go on the face of New Day. In a match against everybody else. My biggest gripe with this thing was is that they keep putting in the advertisements too. How they betrayed the entire SmackDown Live locker room. They betrayed everybody. The only people they really betrayed in this entire thing was Shane McMahon and Randy Orton. Everybody else on the SmackDown Live roster um, wasn't in that Survivor Series match. The only two people still in on Team SmackDown by the time Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn came out was Randy Orton who was in the ring and Shane McMahon on the apron. Shinsuke Nakamura was already gone. He was already in the back. Everybody else on that team was on. So to say that they betrayed everybody on SmackDown, really, and the fact that they really didn't, if you want to say they really betrayed everyone on SmackDown Live, do what I just said a little bit ago. You should have had Randy Orton being distracted by these two and not have Shane McMahon chase them off. Not have Shane McMahon chase them off. Have Shane McMahon beat down, beat down by a bunch, and have Randy Orton get beat and blindsided by Braun Strowman or Triple H or Kurt Angle, whichever one you want to go with, have him get pinned, have Shane McMahon beaten down by these two, thrown in the ring, and pinned by whoever on the other team, and they win, have Shane, uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn outside the ring just doing the, like, taunting Daniel Brown with the yes chance as the show goes off the air. That's how smart, that's how that should have went, but no, they wanted to go a different route by having Triple H screw Kurt Angle out of him being part of one of the last survivors, and then Triple H taking Shane McMahon and beating Shane McMahon. So the little claim that they betrayed the entire SmackDown Live roster was kind of just bogus. So New Day versus Shane versus Owens and Zayn in a lumberjack match ended just like the lumberjack match will happen this sun this Sunday for the women's big brawl from all the lumberjacks. Everybody gets in the ring. Everybody does this. Everybody does that. They beat on each other. Sami Zayn rolls up. I believe it was Kofi Kingston for the one, two, three. Sami Zayn, Ke Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens wins. Kevin Owens escapes through the crowd thanks to Rusev and Aiden English, but Sami Zayn wasn't so lucky. The New Day beat him down, gave him the, the midnight hour, and just laid waste to him. In the back, Sammy, Kevin Owens is on his knees begging, which was the lowest I think he's ever gotten, they ever got for him. The lowest they ever got for him. He was in the back, begging not to be fired. Daniel Bryan said, we're not going to fire you. I wasn't ever going to fire you guys. I see your talent. But next week, the next week, I want you to be here in a singles match against Randy Orton. The next week, Sam McMahon comes out, really wasn't too happy that they weren't fired. He expected them to be fired, but they weren't, thanks to Daniel Bryan being a good-hearted soul. But Daniel Bryan, but Sam McMahon's like, okay, well, they're not fired, but it's going to be Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens. Sami Zayn is barred from ringside. 
And everything was a, it was a no DQ match, which kind of makes it pointless to do a bar from ring side angle. So the Randy Orton and Kevin Owens have a pretty good match. And this is and I'm you know if you're wondering, man, he's talking about this match a lot longer than any of the other matches because this is the only angle that's really had any proper build, and this has been going on for months. Everything else was just thrown together. This is like the only match. This is just like TLC ended up being. This is a one match card. You can miss pretty much anything else. The only other thing is that AJ Styles versus um, Jinder Mahal. If AJ Styles wins, then it really doesn't fucking matter. We just have this match, and that's it. Anyway, Randy Orton and Kevin Owens had a pretty good, decent match. They ended up going to the outside, brawling into the crowd, around, and on up to the ramp. Then all of a sudden, behind Randy Orton comes Sami Zayn, not breaking the barred from ringside order. Hits Randy Orton in the leg and damages his leg. Kevin Owens gets him back in the ring and ends up beating Randy Orton. And that was the end of the show. No, like, Shane McMahon coming out mad or anything. We found that out the next week. We had Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn in the ring the next week on SmackDown Live. Gloating about how they outsmarted Randy, Triple, um, Randy Orton and... Uh, Shane McMahon, Sami Zayn gets out of the ring and says how this is ringside. He comes up to the ramp area and says how this isn't ringside. So we didn't break the rules, which was the uh, most obvious thing ever. He starts talking about how they won, saying it over and over. And all of a sudden, out comes out from behind RKO to Kevin Owens from Randy Orton. So, Shane McMahon comes out and says, At Clash of Champions, it will be Randy Orton and a partner of his choosing at the time versus Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. But later in that night, it will be Sami Zayn versus Randy Orton. And Kevin Owens will be at ringside, but he will be handcuffed to the ring ropes. During that entire night, Randy, like Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are trying to get this match changed. They talk to Daniel Bryan over and over, trying to get him to cut, like to nullify the ruling of Shane McMahon. But Daniel Bryan agrees with him, and Kevin Owens was cuffed to the ringside area for 95% of the match. And Randy Orton, you can just tell by the way they end this match. They got a 50-50 book, but they also, I think they still have heat on Sami Zayn, for whatever reason, for the incident that happened during the UK tour where those two left the ring before getting beat down by the New Day. So, then you have, after the match, because Randy Orton beats, beats Sami Zayn after Kevin Owens, Owens breaks, from the, breaks from the ring rope cuffs, comes up to try and help, gets knocked down. Then Randy Orton wins, and after the match, both those guys beat down on Randy Orton until Shinsuke Nakamura comes out, helps them. They both hit their finishes on each, both men each, and then it was decided that these two would it would be Randy Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura, which who else was it going to be? Quite honestly, this was one of the most obvious choices of partner of his choosing. It's been Shinsuke Nakamura and Randy Orton dealing with Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens as pretty much um, the Shane McMahon's lackeys if you want to call if you want to say that about Orton and Shinsuke Nakamura they've been the um enforcers of Shane McMahon's will so after that match we go to the back Shane McMahon says one of the best endings to Smackdown he's seen in a long time Daniel Bryan asks so you're done punishing these guys that's it you're not going to punish them anymore no Shane McMahon's like no I'm not even close well no we just got started so basically he says I'm going to be the special guest referee at the Clash of Champions, and if the Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens loses, they will be fired from not just SmackDown, but all of WWE. So, what do we got here? We got a McMahon show, flexing their muscle, showing their ego, showing how much, of, how much the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. How his vindictive side is coming out. How he's becoming more and more like his father. And that he does have a personal vendetta against these guys. And I believe he's done enough to these guys to want everything that they've done. But I guess he wants to do more. Then we lead to the Go Home Show to Clash of Champions, which is this past Tuesday. You have 
Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens trying to mimic and mock the Yes movement by doing the Yep movement, which failed miserably. They wanted to occupy SmackDown with the Yep movement. It did not work. They kind of it, it was go, It wasn't supposed to be like Occupy Raw, which they did back in 2014, which was ironic because they highlighted that in a great WWE moment a couple weeks ago. I find that funny, but. Yeah, all in all, Shane McMahon was not there this past Tuesday. Shane McMahon probably getting himself his um, custom smack um, Clash of Champions um, referee shirt for Clash of Champions being like custom fitted for him. That's why he wasn't there. Who knows? But you had Daniel Bryan say he was going to be out there on commentary. He during commentary, I will have to say he just tore into Bryan Saxton. I don't know what was going on. Was he? Fighting with Vince McMahon with Byron, Byron Saxon being the mouthpiece. I don't know. That was just, it was pretty funny. It was the best thing they did at that time. But he comes out doing the Occupy Smackdown attempt and pretty much buries them about it and says, it, the Yes movement wasn't about me. It was about the fans and what the fans wanted. And says, well, we're going to make sure, I don't think he's going to screw you guys, but I'm going to make 100% sure because Shane McMahon is going to be the first special guest referee. I'm going to be the second. So we had two special guest referees at Clash of Champions. Not really much of a surprise there. But how will this go? How will this go? Because later in the night you had Shinsuke Nakamura versus Kevin Owens with both Sami Zayn and Mandy Orton at ringside. So... Midway towards the end of the match, the referee takes a bump by Kevin Owens, pretty much cold cocking him and knocking him out. Ran, ran, Daniel Bryan gets up from commentary, goes over, grabs the referee shirt off the referee. I'm surprised he didn't just have a referee shirt on his lap waiting. But he goes over, takes his, his coat off, if he didn't have it on, I don't remember. But he puts the referee shirt on, shirt on in the slowest fashion I think I have ever seen. He grabs the shirt and pretty much just like he's taking his sweet time to put this referee shirt on. Gets into the ring a little bit late. Daniel Bryan gives a two count to Shinsuke Nakamura. Sami Zayn gets in the ring mad that like, Daniel Bryan, you can't do this. You're not the referee for this match. What do you think you're doing? Randy Orton gets involved. Those two fight a little bit. Randy Orton, Sami Zayn gets the best of Randy Orton. Gets up on the apron to distract Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke Nakamura ends up getting hit with the pop, pop power bomb by Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens gets hit, gets the three count from Daniel Bryan, and that was that. Byron Saxton the whole time probably not happy that he just got his self pants by Daniel Bryan the entire match that he was on commentary was just like these guys have Daniel Bryan in, his, in their pocket. Daniel Bryan's going to screw Shane McMahon and uh, and Nakamura and them. It's going to be Daniel Bryan's going to help these guys win this match. It's like. Aren't you supposed to be the babyface and you're sitting here trying to act like this? I mean, we don't even know what's going to happen, but they could do something here. But with the announcement of the Mixed Match Challenge, which they just announced this past, like, two days ago, they kind of, like, put them, they kind of booked themselves into a hole here. Because the Mixed Match Challenge, which will be starting in January, yes, it's in January, but if you follow the stipulation... And these guys are to be fired from WWE completely. How is Sami Zayn supposed to be part of the Mixed Match Challenge if they lose this match? Which then in turn makes me figure that these guys are going to probably win this match. By having... Shane McMahon's probably going to take a bump in this match. You know Daniel Bryan's not going to take a bump in this match. Daniel Bryan is not going to take any type of bump. He's not allowed to take any type of bump right now. If he, would, if they if he takes a bump... Then they are hypocrites. They are very, very big hypocrites of themselves. But Daniel Bryan will not be taking a bump. So I think he's going to he's going to count the pinfall. Shane McMahon is going to be knocked out somehow, some way. I don't know how. Maybe it's a bump. Maybe it's like we saw this past Tuesday with Kevin Owens, like going for a move on one of the on one on either Orton or. Like, go for, like, an elbow on Orton or Nakamura, and they move, and behind them is, um, behind one of them, and he gets knocked out. Daniel Bryan, who will be at ringside. Daniel Bryan will be the second guest referee, and what, basically, he's going to do for the majority of the match, he'll be on the outside. If Owens or Zayn goes for a chair, he'll rip the chair away. 
I don't know why I'm, like the commentators have never seen a two referee in a match. And this isn't just guest referees. We've had multiple referees in matches before. You have the one in the middle and you have the one on the outside. I mean, it ain't that hard to figure that out. But they could fire these guys for a couple weeks. And I mean, not just one week like they did with the John Cena thing a couple years ago where John Cena was fired and the next week he was back. Like, he's, he, it was, that was the dumbest thing ever. It's like John Cena, that was back then. It was like John Cena, oh, he got fired for losing to Wade Barrett, but he was gone for a week. If they fire these guys, you got to make it so they don't come back for till for the rest of the year. Like, have these guys off TV, have them out of house shows, give them a two-week vacation. What the hell? And then on the, the January 2nd edition of SmackDown, you could have them start wreaking havoc, beating, uh, like, doing what John Cena did with them to the Nexus, and coming to, like, Shane's hotel room, create, wrecking havoc with Shane, which would lead to them being rehired, but they have to be put into some kind of... I wish this was happening at a later... Like, I wish this was happening not now, because they really only have the Royal Rumble, and you really don't have a pay-per-view that you could be doing, like, say this happened, like, they got fired at Survivor Series, or they got fired at Hell in a Cell. They won at Survivor. They 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 made their presence known at Survivor Series. This would have been more perfect for Survivor Series, for Hell in a Cell, Survivor Series, and the blow off being at Clash of Champions in a different way. If they would have had this all like all this heel stuff happen before, this feels like it would have been better. If it would have been like this match happens at Hell in a Cell, they get fired from WWE. You don't see them. Uh, for the entire build of Survivor Series, and then what they did at Survivor Series with Kevin with um with Shane McMahon, you ha happens still. It still happens, but they're gone. They're fired. What are these guys coming to? The Masters don't make any mention of them because they don't work there at the uh, at the time, and then they're rehired, but they're put into a cage match or hell or something or something they're put into like some kind of like a no dq tag team match against shinsuke nakamura and randy orton or something like that and then it would have just been like they get their jobs back if they win the match and they would win this match then that would like just the way that they're doing this they really either they either they get they get fired they're gone for like a week or two and then they're brought back by daniel bryan to the the stain of Shane McMahon or Shane McMahon's going to get knocked out and Daniel Bryan's going to count like counting the pinfall and calling the match down the middle because you know Shane McMahon's not going to Shane McMahon's not going to he did at SummerSlam he did at SummerSlam between AJ Styles and Kevin Owens but he didn't have a vendetta against Kevin Owens at the time he does now. So, it's going to be a really interesting match. I think they're going to keep their jobs by Daniel Bryan be, take, counting the pinfall because Shane McMahon got knocked out. But we will see when we get there. And that is your survive, your Clash of Champions preview and predictions. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at the front. Like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on and find me on twitch.tv slash the front 8 where I'll be streaming every single day from here on out. And I will hope to see you guys this Sunday night as we will review this show, which really the only match I really care about is the one I just went over in great detail. Until then, you guys have yourself a wonderful afternoon, evening, or night, and I will see you guys later.